Hi everyone, my name is Courtney. I'm Fiverr Fox Studios and I want to welcome you to Mosaic Monday. Today we are going to be working on this design here, which I designed so that I could make this hat back here. We're not learning the hat, I'm not teaching the hat, I'm actually just teaching the design so that you can use it to make a hat or anything else that you might would like to do. In Christmas colors, it looks obviously very Christmassy. So I have named this the Merry Mosaic Hat. And today we are going to learn how to work it flat or in the round so that you can make anything that you want. We're working in a fairly small multiple of 10 and we are working with a total of 10 rows to repeat this design. So you're going to learn that in this video today and work a swatch or project here with me. For those of you who are interested in the hat, I have actually written this pattern out completely, including the brim, which I will teach how to do brims like this in the coming weeks. But I wanted to point out that that written pattern is included with the chart set purchase. So you get charts to work this design any way that you would like. And there is an actual written pattern in there for the hat. On the hat, we have worked in lace weight yarn. So I did design this hat originally to be made in lace weight, but in that written pattern, I do give you the information that's needed in case you wanted to use a different size of yarn for a hat. It will lose some of the drape the thicker your yarn is, the less drapey this is gonna be. And this can be worked, you can make a slouchy hat, which is what I have, a short slouch. Here, this is 10 inches total tall. Or you can work a more fitted kind of beanie style hat with this as well. The pattern does include information for those of you who are not going to use size one yarn. There's info in that pattern on ways that you can adjust it. If you are interested in this particular design and the chart set with the written pattern for the hat, you can find the link down in my description box for the Etsy store. As always, you never have to buy anything, but I do appreciate you guys watching the entire video and following along with me working your project. Please make sure that you are giving this video a thumbs up. Let's jump in, grab two colors of yarn and your favorite crochet hook, and let's get started. To begin, you will take color B, which is going to be the background of your project. So it's going to be pretty much the main color and you're going to take that color B, chain out in multiples of 10 as many times as you want, and then you will add four chains to the end of that chain count if you're working flat. If you are going to be working in the round, you only need to chain in the multiple of 10 over and over as many times as you would like, and then you will slip stitch to the first chain that you made to form a ring and you will begin working the repeats given in this video in that same stitch that you slip stitch into. I'm working flat, so I have chained out a total of 24 starting chains, which is my multiple of 10 twice for 20 chains, and then the four chains added to the end. So we are now going to begin row number one, and row one begins with a traditional single crochet. So we have to skip one chain, from our hook and move here into the second chain from our hook and work a traditional single crochet. And all that means is we're going to go completely into the stitch under the V. And we finish a single crochet just like normal from there. Now we begin our repeat for row one and we are going to be working a back loop only single crochet into every stitch except for the very last stitch of the row. So what I mean by back loop is we are picking up just this one side of the stitch instead of going completely in, we pick up one side and we single crochet just like normal from there. And just the picking up of the back loop is what makes it a mosaic single crochet and nothing else. Otherwise, it's the same exact stitch that you're used to doing, just working in the back loop only since it is a mosaic single crochet. So you're going to continue to work one single crochet, working in that back loop only all the way down the row until you have one stitch left 
and then we will meet up at that point and finish out the row together and bind off. So you are going to keep working and meet up with me in just a moment when you're ready for your row end. We are now here at the end of row one. You can see this is what my work is looking like. And we have just one stitch left in this row to work. So I am going to be working a traditional single crochet into this next stitch, and that's how you end every row. The last stitch of every row is always worked as a traditional single crochet going completely in that stitch under the V. So we now just grab and pull up our yarn, grab and pull through our two loops and finish out our single crochet. So now we are going to bind off. This is how you'll be binding off at the end of every single row. You are going to chain up two, or you could just do a chain one if you prefer. Clip your yarn and we pull out that loop right out the top and we are going to cinch down these two chains to form a little knot here at the end of the row. So I just place thumb and index right above those two chains and I pull up on the tail while I push down with my thumb and index and you end up with this perfect little knot here at the row end. So now at the end of row one, remember I chained out for this little swatch a total of 24 starting chains. And now here at the end of row one, I have a total of 23 working stitches because we used one of those chains as a turning chain when we were starting row one down here. That's why we have this little side bump right here at the end of or the beginning of the row. And so we have one less stitch than what we chained when we are working flat for this pattern. So now we're going to work into the very first stitch of the row to do our join on for row number two. So to join on for every row, you'll be working it just like I'm about to show you. Look here at the top of your row. So right here, back to our first stitch that we made, and we want to identify the very first V. We want to make sure that we do not think that this little turning chain side bump is a stitch. So make sure that you push that turning chain down here out of the way and you'll notice that it will scoot down, but your first stitch in the row will not move. So make sure you are getting into our true first stitch, a traditional single crochet. So we're completely in our stitch. Now we grab color A, and color A will be the color that all of your trees will be throughout this pattern. Just lay it onto my hook, and then I pull up that loop right on through. And now I'm going to grab my tail and working yarn and chain one. And then when we return back into the same exact first stitch, back into the complete stitch, and we can drop our tail now. So we finish out our traditional single crochet with just our working strand of yarn. So we grab and pull up a loop. Now we grab and we pull through all those little loops. It'll look or feel like you have three on there. So now we're going to begin row two's repeat. And our repeat for row number two is exactly the same. We're going to be working one back loop only single crochet into each and every stitch on this row, except for the last stitch, of course. So we are going to begin working that now, and you will notice that as you work on down your row, it's a little bit easier with this color change. You can see what we get after we pick up our back loop. We are leaving these little front loops that we'll be picking up later when we do our double crochets. So you're gonna continue down your row, placing one, back loop only single crochet into each stitch and then you will end your row with a traditional single crochet in the very last stitch. For the rest of the tutorial I will be calling these stitches here that we're working just plain old single crochets and you will know that when we are working a repeat all single crochets are always worked in the back loop only.
Row number three begins now, and we are going to be working in color B. Our repeat for row number three begins with three double crochets, and we will be working all of our double crochets exactly as I'm about to show you. So you are going to wrap your yarn just like normal for a double crochet, but we are going to identify our next stitch here, and we slide directly down two rows below and picking up that front loop. That's where we're going to be anchoring all of our double crochet stitches in this front loop that we left from doing our back loop only single crochets. So now we are going to grab our yarn and pull up a loop. And you're wanting to make sure that you do not drag all this up. So don't pull tight here and pull your stitch up. But you are going to now grab your yarn again and pull through two. Grab and pull through two. So that is our first double crochet. So now we are going to make the other two that begin this repeat. So before we move on, we want to make sure that we identify the correct next stitch. You are working one to one stitch when you're working your double crochets. So each double crochet takes up one stitch back here on this previous row. So when you fold your double crochet back into place, it covers up that one stitch. And we know then that this is our next stitch in the row for sure. If you're getting your count off, if you are missing stitches, that sort of thing, that is what is going on. You are working your next stitch incorrectly, possibly even working it into the same stitch or skipping over too far and working into the wrong stitch over here. So make sure that you're just lining up your stitch. Each double crochet takes up one stitch back here on this row. So we put that into place. Now we're gonna work our second double crochet. Number two, and last but not least, number three here in the very next stitch. Now we are going to work one single crochet. So I go here into the very next stitch, picking up that back loop. Four double crochets. So we're going to identify our next stitch, slide down, pick up that front loop, and then begin working our double crochet just like normal. So there's one, two, three, And number four. One single crochet. So we're going to make sure we identify the next stitch and work right in there. And we will end our repeat with one double crochet. So now let's recap what we have done. Row number three's repeat began with three double crochets, one single crochet, four double crochets, one single crochet, and then we work one double crochet. So these 10 stitches make up our 10 stitch repeat for this row. We're going to work one more time together. So if you're new, we'll do this one more time. If you are advanced, you guys know, jump down in that description and just move ahead to row number four. But for the rest of us, let's work this repeat one more time. So now we're going to begin our repeat with three double crochets. So we begin one, Two, 
two and three one single crochet four double crochets one two three and number four one single crochet One double crochet ends that repeat. So we are now going to recap what we've done, taking a look at this whole row. So our repeat began right here. So we finished our first repeat and then we began the repeat again, three double crochets one single crochet, four double crochets, one single crochet, one double crochet ends that repeat. So as you are working on down your row, basically our cheater method for this row is to just work sets of the four double crochets, one single crochet, four doubles, one single. That is the, what, the effect that you end up getting when you are ending the repeat and starting again. So we end with one double crochet, then we add three double crochets to that same area. So same effect. So now we're going to work our row end. So we always work our row ends the same. We are going to restart our repeat for one stitch. So in this case, our repeat starts with a double crochet. So we will be working one double crochet here into the second to last stitch. And then we have our final stitch, which is always a traditional single crochet, going completely in that stitch under the V. So all of your row ends will be working out exactly the same. You will find that you have two stitches left here at the row end. You restart your repeat for one stitch in the second to last stitch. And then you do your traditional single crochet in the very last stitch of the row. So we are now going to bind off and move on to row four. Row four begins now and we are working in color A. Row four's repeat begins with three single crochets. One. Two. And three. one double crochet, and we're going to end with six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and number six. That ends our repeat. So our repeat for row four began with three single crochets, one double crochet, and we end with six single crochets. So you keep repeating that exact set of stitches on down your row, and we will meet up when you're ready for row number five. Remember though, at the row end, you will restart your repeat for one stitch 
and then traditional single crochet in the very last stitch of the row. Row number five begins now and we are working in color B. Our repeat for row number five begins with one double crochet. five single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, two double crochets, one, and number two, one single crochet, and one double crochet will end our repeat. So now we're going to recap what we have done. Row five's repeat began with one double crochet, five single crochets, two double crochets, one single crochet, and we end with one double crochet. So you're going to continue to work this exact set of stitches. Meet up with me when you're ready for row number six. Row six begins now and we are working in color A. Our repeat for row number six begins with two single crochets. One and two. Three double crochets. One, two, and three. Three single crochets. One, two, three, one double crochet, and we end our repeat with one single crochet. So now's a good time to mention a great way to help yourself from getting mixed up or uh, losing a stitch is to mark the end of your repeat. That's what I like to do. So I would mark my double crochet here to keep me in line and just keep moving my stitch marker up along the way so that I can keep track of my repeat row end. That will probably stop some of you who tend to like to add in stitches that I didn't say here. <laughs> that happens a lot. Um, a lot of it has to do with the fact that like on this row, we begin with two single crochets. So even though... You hear me say one when you're working it you might add two here because you want to automatically even out what we're doing but you don't need to do that with the way the pattern works if you just follow exactly what I say it will work out perfectly so that is a great way to kind of stop yourself from accidentally adding in a stitch to even this here when you don't need to do those uh, stitch markers at the row end and that may help to solve that problem if that's what you're doing when you have a issue and make a mistake. 
So now we're going to recap real quick. Row six is two single crochets, three double crochets, three single crochets, one double crochet, and we end our repeat with one single crochet. So you're going to continue to work that exact set of stitches and meet up with me for row seven. Row seven begins now and we are working in color B. Row seven's repeat begins with one single crochet. One double crochet. Three single crochets. One, two, three, one double crochet. And we end the repeat with four single crochets. One, two, three, and four. So let's recap it. Row seven's repeat began with one single crochet, one double crochet, three single crochets, one double crochet, and we end with four single crochets. So you're going to continue to work this exact set of stitches. We start our repeat again. You'll notice that we are, we're outlining our previous trees, but we are creating the setup for our next set of trees as we move up the pattern. So it's a staggered effect with our trees. So you're going to keep working the repeat and we'll meet up in just a moment for row number eight. Row eight begins now and we are working in color A. Row eight's repeat begins with three single crochets. One, two, and three. One double crochet. Three single crochets. One, two, three, and our repeat ends with three double crochets. One, two, and three. So let's recap. Row number eight's repeat began with three single crochets, one double crochet, three single crochets, and we end our repeat with three double crochets. So continue to work that exact set of stitches and meet up with me for row nine. Row number nine begins now, and we are working in color B. Row number nine's repeat begins with three double crochets. One. Two. Three, four, 
one single crochet. three double crochets, one, two, and three. And we end the repeat with three single crochets. One, two, three. Let's recap it. Row number nine's repeat began with three double crochets, one single crochet, three double crochets, and we end with three single crochets. So you'll continue to work that exact set on down your row. Meet up with me for row 10. Row number 10 begins now and we are working in color A. Row 10's repeat begins with eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. One double crochet, And we end the repeat with one single crochet. So let's recap. Row number 10's repeat began with eight single crochets, one double crochet, and we end with one single crochet. So you're gonna continue to work that exact set on down your row. Basically a cheater method from this point forward is you're working a total of nine single crochets, one double crochet. And then you work nine single crochets, one double crochet. Once we're set up, that's really what's going on here. We'll meet back up one more time to talk about how you can grow your project and how I recommend ending this when you are finished. For those of you who are going to continue to work and grow this up for a larger project, you are going to repeat rows three, through 10 over and over as many times as you would like. And then when you are finished, you will work row number three as your final row. So after your last repeat has been worked, you will work row three as the final row. And of course you can always do a row of single crochet or slip stitch to kind of thicken up that final line up here at the end of the project so that it matches better with the bottom here where we began the project. So hopefully you have found this video to be helpful and if you did enjoy it please make sure that you are giving me a thumbs up. A comment down below is also greatly appreciated and as always I truly appreciate your time for watching especially those of you who watch the entire video. Really appreciate it and until next time thank you so much and bye for now.